Okay, good day again. This is the part two of the histology of the digestive tract. Now for this part, we will be talking about histology of small and large intestines. Okay? Just like the esophagus in the stomach, our objective for the small and large intestine is to describe its segments, to describe each layer of the small and large intestine, to know where, it, where uh, are there any differences or similarities on the segments of each digestive and track and to correlate common clinical conditions affecting the small and the large intestines. Okay, so this is just a picture showing you the esophagus, the stomach, and this part right here after the stomach, uh, that's the beginning of the small intestine to be specific. This is your duodenum. Okay, all right, just like the in the esophagus and the stomach. Um, the digestive tract of the small and large intestine, they have the common properties, such as they have the mucosa, submucosa, tunica muscularis or muscularis externa, and the tunica serosa in or adventitia. Okay. Now, the small intestine, let's start with the small intestine. It's the site where the digestive processes are completed and where the nutrients or the products of digestion are being absorbed by the small intestinal cells at the epithelial lining. The small intestine actually is relatively long, approximately 5 meters, and it consists of three segments, the duodenum, the jejunum, and the ileum. Uh, these three segments merged, and then they have the same basic histological organization. Now let's talk about the first layer, the mucosa. So we will be talking in general in the, whole, the, the small intestine. The mucosa is lined with a simple columnar epithelium. Take note, you have to indicate with goblet cells. Okay, The villi actually, this one as projected in this illustration, are actually cores of loose connective tissue that extends from the lamina propria. They contain fibroblasts, smooth muscle fibers, lymphocytes, plasma cells, fenestrated capillaries, and central lymphatic called lacteal. Now, this is viewed macroscopically, the lining of the small intestine. It shows a series of a permanent circular or semilunar folds called your uh, plica circularis. Now, that's very characteristic of your small intestines. Okay, shown to you in this slide are actually our intestinal glands. These are also known as your crypts of Libercon. They are found in the lamina propria of the small intestines. Okay? As mentioned in the part one of the digestive tract, uh, when we say glands, they are specifically found only at the lamina propria, except for those two organs, the esophagus uh, and the duodenum. They, we will be discussed that in a while. Okay. And in the mucosa, aside from the lining epithelium, the lamina propria, they, we also have the muscularis mucosa, which are actually a smooth muscle fibers. All right. Plica circularis are macroscopically visible. These are actually crescent shaped folds of the mucosa and submucosa. They extend around one half to two thirds of the circumference of the lumen of the small intestine. They're actually permanent structure, but their presence does not depend on the state of distension of the small intestine. They are absent from the first few centimeters of the duodenum, and they are also absent um, to the uh, on the distal part of the ileum, yung papunta na ng large intestine. They are particularly well developed in the jejunum and they increase the surface area of the mucosa. Okay. Next are the crypts of Libercon. This are, these are also known as your intestinal glands or intestinal crypts. They are found between the intestinal villi. Actually, between the uh, the, the panel cells, no, in the in the intestinal glands. We can actually find, find panel cells that are located at the bottom of the crypts, and they are actually for secretion of intestinal juice, which contains enteropeptidase, 
which activates the pancreatic enzyme trypsin and small amounts of amylase coming from the pancreas. Right, this is a picture showing you this. Uh, the, this area right here, the one that is shown, is actually a, a crypts of Libercan, no intestinal glands. No, sorry, this is actually a plica circularis. The plica circularis. These are the lamina propria, and the, these are your intestinal glands. Uh, muscularis mucosa, muco, uh, submucosa, tunica muscularis, and tunica serosa. Okay. Next slide actually is um, cells that are found in the intestinal glands. The uh, this stain that does not this cell that does not take up the stain are actually all your goblet cells. Okay? These are all goblet cells in the intestinal villi. Lamina propria, this is where the intestinal glands are found. The one that is being pointed right now by the arrow, or this one on the right side of the screen, are actually your panet cells. Okay? Your panet cells are found at the base of the intestinal glands or intestinal crypts. Now, let's talk about the cells of the small intestines. Um, enterocytes are the absorptive cells. They are tall columnar cells, each with an oval nucleus that are located basally. The apical end of each uh, enterocyte displays a prominent region called the striated, or what we call your brush border. Ultrastructurally, the serrated border or the brush border is seen to be a layer of a densely packed microvilli that is covered by glyco glycocalyx through which nutrients are taken into the cell. So actually, the enterocytes are the parenchyma or the characteristic cells of the small intestine. Take note of this. Next, we have the goblet cells. The goblet cells... As mentioned, they did not take up the stain. They are interspersed among the absorptive um, enterocyte. They secrete what we call the glycoprotein mucins that protect and lubricate the lining of the small intestine. And that's the main function of the glycoprotein mucin that are being secreted by the goblet cells. And please do not uh, um, forget that the intestinal lining epithelium of the small intestine is with goblet cells. Okay. Next, we have the panet cells. They are located in the basal portion of the intestinal crypts, um, and they are exocrine cells with large eosinophilic secretory granules in their apical cytoplasm. Their main function is they, their granules release lysozyme, phospholipase A2, and hydrophobic peptides called defense scenes. They are all of which bind and break down membranes of microorganism and bacterial cell. So there are more of a protection against bacteria. The panet cells have also an important role in innate immunity and it regulates the micro environment of the intestinal crypts. So in this picture, the upper right corner, this is actually an intestinal gland or intestinal crypts or crypts of Libercon found in the uh, lamina propria. That um, cells found at the basal portion of the intestinal crypts. This is a, a magnified version of that intestinal glands. These cells that are being pointed right now are actually your panet cells. Okay. Okay, next. The anterior endocrine cells are um, concentrated in lower portion of the intestinal glands. They actually produce a lot of peptide hormones, including the cholecystokinin and secretin. Their function, the cholecystokinin, stimulates the, secretive, the, the secretion of your digestive enzymes in the pancreas and also for the contraction of the gallbladder you know, when you have a fatty food or an alcohol intake. Secretin, on the other hand, stimulates the pancreas to release pancreatic juice, which is rich in bicarbonate ions. They also amplify the effect of the cholecystokinin to contract the gallbladder to release the bile. Okay? All right. Next, we have the M, M cells or microfold cells. They are specialized epithelial cells in the mucosa of the ileum overlying the lymphoid follicles of the Peyer's patches. 
their basal membrane invaginations contain many of the intraepithelial lymphocytes and antigen presenting cells. So M cells are not actually found or cannot be distinguished from the other cells using a hematoxin and eosin stain. So these are just a modified specialized uh, epithelial cells. All right, so here's the table showing you the different cells of the small intestines. We have the enterocytes, that's the most numerous, the main absorptive cells, and they are the parenchyma of the small intestines. The goblet cells, they're scattered in between or among enterocytes. They are for mucus lubrication, which protects the surface epithelium. The panad cells with, with the prominent eosinophilic secretory granules at apex Found at the base of the crypts, they, the, they provide the first line of defense against disease-producing microbes. They execute lysozymes as well. Okay. All right, so these are the cells found in the lamina propria. What else can be, can, uh, be found in the lamina propria? In the lamina propria, specifically, specifically in the ilium, no, actually the lamina propria and the submucosa they contain this uh, well-developed uh, mucosa-associated lymphoid tissue. Now, it consists of a large lymphoid nodule aggregates known as your Peyer's patches. Actually, class, uh, when you say Peyer's patches, th this lymphatic nodule is only found in the ilium. Sabi nila, they are found in, uh, they can be found both in the lamina propria and the submucosa as well. There are also aggregates uh, of the lymphatic nodule found in the lamina propria in the, du in the duodenum and jejunum, but they are not called Bayer's patch. They just called lymphatic nodule. But for the lymphatic nodule found at the lamina propria and submucosa of the ilium, specifically, this is what we call your Bayer's patch or Bayer's patches. Okay. Now, let's move on from the mucosa. Let's go now to the submucosa. Okay? As mentioned a while ago, there are two organs where glands are found in the submucosa. In the esophagus, it's called the deep esophageal glands. And please take note that in the duodenum, in the submucosa of the duodenum, we can find Brunner's glands. Okay? Duodenal gland or Brunner's glands are actually small excretory ducts opening among the intestinal crypts. So this glass, the one that is being pointed right now, are actually your Brunner's glands that are found in the submucosa of the duodenum only. Okay, In the ilium, in the jejunum, yeah, there are no Brunner's glands, just in the duodenum. Okay. If you notice, in the lamina propria, these are all your intestinal glands. Separating the uh, mucosa from the submucosa is the muscularis mucosa. And these are all your Brunner's glands. Okay? Again, Brunner's glands, mucosa in the duodenum. Okay? Found also in the submucosa of the small intestine are your Meissner's plexus or their submucosal nerve plexus. They are needed for secretion, you know, secretory activity of the mucosal epithelium. All right. Let's go on to the tunica muscularis or muscularis externa. As mentioned a while ago, uh, in the pylorus of the um, stomach, you no, know, I call na sure, internal inner circular, outer longitudinal, all throughout the small intestine as well as in the large intestine, they are composed of an inner circular and outer longitudinal. In the tunica muscularis, the, um, we can also find, as mentioned in the, P, in the part one of the digestive shock histology, the myenteric or Arbax nerve plexus. They, uh, it, its function is for motor or peristaltic movement. Now, as you can see in this picture at the upper right corner, this is the inner circular and outer longitudinal layer of the tunica muscularis of the small intestine. And in between that, you may find a nerve plexus. That is your Arbax plexus. So if there is contraction or stimulation of this Arbax plexus, obviously, you will produce a contraction of the smooth muscle, causing it to have a peristaltic movement. No? Another picture at the lower right, um, 
uh, of the slide is the inner circular and outer longitudinal, and these are actually your the nerve plexus found in between is your um, our back plexus or myenteric plexus. Another picture showing you a myenteric plexus between an inner circular and outer longitudinal, inner muscle and external muscle. So function, peristalsis. Okay, so let's have a review on what segment of that small intestine para uh, in the practical exam, you may identify it uh, easily. This picture right here is actually are the, the duodenal glands or the Brunner's gland. They are found in the submucosa of the duodenum. Okay, next slide. Uh, this one actually is there are a presence of this lymphatic nodule called your Peyer's patches. Now, another clue would be this is a in small intestine because of the presence of the intestinal villi, your intestinal glands, and this specifically the lymphatic nodule in the ileum. Okay. And lastly, your jejunum, the prominence of your plica circularis. That is your clue that this segment of the small intestine is your jejunum. Dok pare pares lang sila. Yes, because there are small intestine. Small intestine exhibited by its characteristic uh, finger like projection of your intestinal villi. Okay? Dito may Brunner's gland, duodenum. This, this one is, has a uh, pair spatula, so it's ilium. This one has prominence of plica circularis. Thus, this is your jejunum. Okay? There is a table right here uh, differentiating the three segments of the small intestine. No? No, let's uh, discuss it one by one. The plica circularis, obviously it's the, it is in the small intestine, but it has numerous in duodenum, but it is well-developed and most prominent in the jejunum. The plica circularis in the ilium is short, not well-developed, and it, has, it, it is... Um, it's less numerous compared to the duodenum and jejunum. Look at the shape of the intest uh, the description of the intestinal villi of the duodenum. It's numerous, it's short, and it's broad leaf like. The jejunum, it's numerous, long, slender, finger like, while the intestinal villi of the ilium is club shaped, fewer and shorter. Okay, what about the goblet cells? You may actually find goblet cells uh, towards the large intestine na mas marami, dumadami siya. But uh, still, in the duodenum, there are a few numerous sa jejunum, but more numerous sa ilium. Most numerous na goblet cells will be found in the large intestine. That is why goblet cells are the parenchyma of the large intestine. Okay, In the small intestine, it's actually your enterocyte or your absorptive cells. Glands in the mucosa, sorry, can you please ed edit this one? Glands in the submucosa, okay? Uh, the Brunner's glands in the duodenum and there are absence of glands in the submucosa. Okay, again, please edit this. It is dapat submucosa. All right, this is what I'm talking about in the lamina propria. There are lymphatic solitary nodules in the duodenum and jejunum, but when it comes to ileum, there are aggregates of lymphatic nodules. We call it your Peyer's patches, and this is a characteristic feature of your ileum. Now, grossly, the length of the duodenum, jejunum, and ileum would actually be the, the The shortest segment is the duodenum, and the longest segment with 12 feet is the ileum. Papunta ng small, a uh, large intestine. It's with the widest is found in the duodenum and the narrowest are found in the ileum. In the mesentery, both jejunum and ileum are present in the mesentery, but duodenum uh, is absent in the mesentery. It's also non-movable compared to jejunum and ileum that is movable. Okay. All right, this is just a picture showing you the pyloroduodenal junction or gastroduodenal junction. So in here, this one is the gastroduodenal junction. In this area right here is actually your stomach. So this is the gastro or the pyloro. And this is your duodenal because of its finger-like projection of intestinal villi. And look at this yellow arrow structure. This is your Brunner's gland. Okay? All right, so let's apply it in medicine. 
the small intestine, you have the celiac disease. Uh, in celiac disease, uh, the resulting inflammation affects the enterocytes here, leading to a reduced nutrient absorption. So this is the celiac disease. This is the normal uh, histological characteristic of your small intestine compared to your celiac disease or celiac spru, S-P-R-U-E. It is a disorder of the small intestinal mucosa that causes malabsorption. This can actually lead to damage and destruction of the intestinal bile. Um, it is believed that the cause of the celiac disease is an immune reaction against gluten or other proteins in wheat and certain other types of grain. So in the celiac disease, take note, there is no increase in intraepithelial lymphocyte. There is a reduction in nutrient absorption. Okay, so that would be your celiac disease. Next, we have your Crohn's disease. is a chronic um, inflammatory bowel disease that occurs most commonly in the ileum or in colon, resulting from a poorly understood combination of either immune, environmental, or genetic factors. Uh, it says here, excessive lymphocytic acti activity and inflammation in any or all layers of the intestinal tract. Uh, signs and symptoms would include a pain and localized bleeding, malabsorption, and diarrhea. Okay, that ends the histology of the small intestine. Okay, now let's go now to the large intestine or the bowel. Now it absorbs water and electrolytes and forms indigestible material that will become feces. No, um, some common uh, description of the large intestine is that this one, this one is the appendix, this one is the ileum, this is your ileocecal valve, the transition between the small and large intestine. The cecum, we have a short cecum with ileocecal valve and the appendix, that is the appendix. The ascending colon, the transverse colon, the descending colon, and the sigmoid colon. Okay, and this one is the rectum where feces is stored prior to evacuation. Okay, the mucosa actually locks villi, except in the rectum, which has no major fold. So, meaning, um, in the large intestine, we cannot find villi or intestinal villi. That's your clue. Now, in the mucosa of the large intestine, let's start with the mucosa. It has a shallow plica, semilunaris, but no villi. Again, in the small intestine, it's plica circularis, while in the large intestine, is plica semilunaris. The lining epithelium is the same with the small intestine. It's simple columnar with goblet cells. Your lamina propria is composed of, like the small intestine, loose connective tissue with intestinal glands, and they are rich in lymphoid cells and lymphatic nodules. The muscular is mucosa from the esophagus to stomach to small and large intestine, they are composed of smooth muscles. Okay. Now, the mucosa of the large bowel uh, of the large intestine is penetrated throughout its length by intestinal glands. Okay. So, again, the intestinal glands are found in the lamina propria. Okay. Uh, in, the, in the lining epithelium of the small intestine, the, these goblet cells would actually be producing lubricating mucus and they become more numerous along the length of the colon in the rectum. Thus, its parenchyma is goblet cell. Okay? The parenchyma of your uh, large intestine are your goblet cells. Now, it, uh, now in the lamina propria and the submucosa, we may actually... Uh, find mucosal glands and intestinal glands at the lamina propria, but there are no glands in the submucosa of the large intestines. Okay? Let's go to the tunica muscularis or the muscularis externa. Uh, they're arranged in inner circular and outer longitudinal, the same with the small intestine, but look at this. We have the outer longitudinal muscle layer forming a three flattened strands that is your tenia coli that produce the haustra in the colonic wall. So grossly, you can find the haustra 
but uh, the tinea coli are actually your outer longitudinal muscle layer. Okay, now please take note of that. What uh, muscle pattern? No, it's out. It's actually the outer longitudinal muscle that forms the tinea coli. And lastly, your tunica serosa uh, are actually peritoneal covering. No, you have the complete peritoneal covering that is found in the cecum, appendix, transverse, and sigmoid colon, while the partial peritoneal covering um, can be found in the ascending colon, descending colon, and rectum. There are no peritoneal covering in the anal canal, and we have these appendices epi plus A or epi plus K, which are pouches of adipose tissue. Okay. This is um, another picture of your tenia coli class. Now, this is a tenia coli. Um, higher magnification would look like this. The muscularis layer of the starch intestine has two layers, as mentioned, the inner circular and outer longitudinal. It's actually the outer longitudinal that will consist of a three distinct bundles of muscle fiber forming this tenia coli. Now, it produces the haustra in the colonic wall. All right. Um, actually, this is not part of the digestive, not part of the large intestine, but uh, it's um, um, para lang siya diverticulum. No? Appendix is found in the uh, cecum. No? Uh, there are also lymphoid tissue that is found in the lamina propria. And if you look at this um, picture, you may see that this is an appendix because of its presence of lymphatic nodules, but there are no intestinal villi. So this is really an appendix. And lastly, the anal columns of Margagni. At the distal end of the rectum, the anal canal and the mucosa, as well as the submucosa, are highly vascularized with venous sinuses. They are folded, uh, longitudinal folds, called your anal columns of Margagni here the anal columns of Margagni, intervening the anal sinuses. Um, the fecal material actually will accumulate in the rectum, in the rectal mucosa, that is eliminated by muscular contraction. So meaning, including the action of the internal and external sphincter, internal, yeah, internal and external anal sphincter, it will continue to the circular layer of the muscularis dun sa may voluntary muscle dito na makikita. Okay? So this is the anatomy of the anus, as mentioned. Uh, this one is the skin or the squamous mucosa. So these are actually the location of your um, external hemorrhoids. No, mas masakit ang external hemorrhoids because of the presence of nerve endings. Uh, the internal hemorrhoids are actually found above the dentate line or the pectinate line during rectal examination. Uh, the internal hemorrhoids are actually non-painful. No, but uh, one individual can actually have both mixed type. No, meaning pag mixed type, both external and internal hemorrhoids ang, ang kasama. Okay. All right. Anorectal junction. As you can see, this is actually the anus. It is uh, sorry. This is the anus because of its lining epithelium, the stratified squamous, non keratinized epithelium, and this is the rectal portion. Rectal portion is, um, kita mo dito that this is really large intestine because of absence of intestinal villi and presence of intestinal glands in the lamina propria. We, we may actually find numerous goblet cells here. Thus, this is your rectal portion. As mentioned, in the large intestine, its parenchyma is um, goblet cells. In this picture right here, there is the transition or from the columnar cell epithelium to the stratified squamous non keratinized anal area. Okay, All right. So let's apply it in medicine. Um, the most commonly encountered uh, pathology in the colon is actually your colorectal cancer. Now, it is an adenocarcinoma that develops in uh, initially from such polyps, usually occurring in the epithelium of the rectum. Uh, sigmoid colon or distal descending colon. They are more common in individuals with low fiber diet, which reduces the bulk of fecal material, and this in turn prolongs the, con uh, the, the contact of the mucosa with toxins in the feces. Okay, um, there are actually benign 
adenomatous polyps. They actually have the screening for colorectal cancer would include sigmoidoscopy, colonoscopy to see the polyps. Usually, if you undergo pol uh, colonoscopy or sigmoidoscopy and the uh, GI or the doctor uh, finds out that there are polyps, sometimes they do biopsy already. No? Um, what else? Testing for fecal occult blood resulting from mucosal bleeding as adenocarcinoma invades more deeply into the mucosa. Uh, another symptom of a colorectal cancer are actually your uh, um, uh, alternating diarrhea and constipation, weight loss, blood in stool. So these are actually your uh, warning signs that you have to be screened with colorectal cancer. Uh, if you have a strong family history, um, a screening, okay? Uh, as early as 35 years old, kailangan screen okay for colorectal cancer. Okay, next would be hemorrhoids. The hemorrhoids are actually swollen blood vessels in the mucosa or the submucosa of the anal canal. Um, this is common condition typically resulting from a low-fiber diet, constipation, prolonged sitting, and straining at defecation that would produce increased pressure on this blood vessel. So as mentioned a while ago, uh, internal and external hemorrhoids can be of a mixed type, and hemorrhoidectomy is not a uh, non-pharmacologic treatment for hemorrhoids would be a low-fiber diet, uh, sorry, a high-fiber diet, uh, and then the the ultimate no, the management for hemorrhoids if the pain persists or if there is a grade four hemorrhoids already would be hemorrhoidectomy. And please take note they can be recurrent based or depends on your diet and you practice ng straining at defecation. All right, that ends the histology of the small. Enlarged intestine as uh, this are uh, this is actually a table showing you the organ, the parenchyma, and the lining epithelium as discussed in the part one, the stomach. Look at the small intestine, they have the same lining epithelium, the simple columnar with goblet cells, and the parenchyma of the small intestine are actually your enterocyte or your tall absorptive columnar cells, while your large intestines, its parenchyma are your goblet cells. All right. Thank you for listening and good luck to your examination.